So now we're going to work on creating our player and start giving him some controls and attributes. And I'm going to pull out some ground, one of my platforms out onto the stage. And I'm going to drag one of my idle uh, characters out here. Now he's a little small here, so I'm going to change his size, make him a little bigger. Now, in order to be able to stand on this ground, we want to add a box collider 2D to the platform. And to my character, I want to do the same thing, box collider 2D. And I want to add a rigid body 2D, which allows me to access some physics uh, and apply them to this character. So if I play the game now or press the play button and get into play mode, he falls onto the platform. So he doesn't go through it. So that's that's a good first step. Make sure that you turn the game mode off as you're making changes to the character and adding new things, because if you make some changes here while this is still in game mode, none of them will actually take effect. I'm gonna go back out to my root level assets folder and I'm gonna right click and go create folder and I want to make a scripts folder this is where I'll store all my code scripts that I'll apply to my various objects and right now there's nothing in here but I'm going to actually make another folder for player scripts and I'll make another folder for enemy scripts. And actually the naming on these doesn't really matter, but I guess it's good to create the same naming convention for all of your folders. So inside my player scripts folder, now this is where I'm gonna create the script that's gonna control my player. So I'm gonna to go to create C sharp script and I'm going to type in player script. And if you notice, I typed that straight in. I didn't press enter and then change the name. And that's an important piece because if you don't change the name straight away, then the name of the public class in the script itself will be new behavior or something like that. And it just doesn't work. So let's open this up now. And if you have mono develop as your you know main code editor which is the default then you end up in a window that starts you off ready to write the player script you notice this this name right here for the main public class that has to match exactly the name of the script itself if it doesn't then you'll get a compiler error you'll get a, a run error you won't be able to to actually run the script. So the first thing we're going to do before we start giving the player characteristics is we're going to create a number of variables that we're going to access in our inspector and in the code itself in the script. So let's start out with a private uh, rigid body 2D. We're going to name that my rigid body. And that's going to allow us to access the player's rigid body and help us to control the player. And we're also going to create a public uh, float called movement speed. and a private bool called facing right. Now the movement speed is going to allow us to move horizontally. It's a float, which means that we can uh, turn it into a decimal value and that's public. Now let's save this for just a second. I'm going to hit control S and go back out to my 
uh, Unity interface. And when I click on the player uh, and we apply the script, I'm going to take the player script and drag it onto my player. It shows up here, and you'll notice that that public float is now available for us in the inspector to add value to. Uh, and we can give this a, an integer or a float, and that will control how fast our player moves side to side. Now, the other thing while I'm in here that I forgot to do, which we need to change, is I need to change right here the name of this character and call it player, capital P. Click off of it so it takes, and here we are. We've got a ground and we've got our player. We've applied our player script, and we're going to continue to edit the player script now. We go back in, and in void start, we want to associate this new variable that we just created, uh, my rigid body. We want to associate that with the actual component. Hit component. Rigid body 2D. Okay. So that's going to allow us to access the character's rigid body that exists out in Unity. And in our update, we're actually going to change this. Um, oh, the other thing we want to change here in, in void start is we want to give an initial value to facing right. So facing right is equal to, and because it's a bool, it's either going to be set to true or false. Its initial value is going to be true because, as you can see, my character at the beginning of the game is facing the right. Okay. So far, so good. We'll save that update. And now we're ready to give it uh, some controls. We want to use the keyboard to be able to control the character. So in fixed update, we're actually, we're going we're gonna to have void update. And we're also going to have void fixed update. And I'll, I'll explain to you some more why we have those two things um, working, um, mainly because uh, void update is called once per frame, and fixed update is called, depending, it, sometimes it skips frames depending on what system you're running it on. Um, so we'll have some things in void update and some things in, in the fixed update. For this particular controller so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a function that's going to control our players movement uh, from side to side so let's start underneath fixed update and let's define this new function that we're going to use it's going to be a private void and we're going to call it handle movement. Get that set up. And handle movement is going to take uh, an argument, float, horizontal. And in order to get our player to move from side to side, uh, we want to apply some force or get him moving along the, um, the x-axis. So we're going to call my rigid body dot velocity equals new vector 2. And we have to give um, an X and a Y argument to this new vector tool too. And that's going to get him to move along that, um, that X axis. But what we put in here is important, right? 
we want to remember we want to be able to control how fast he goes with that movement speed so we're going to feed in here whatever the value of horizontal is we're going to multiply that by movement speed oops And that will be our X value. And then our Y is just going to be velocity dot Y. Oops. Again, it's uh, Unity anticipates what it thinks you might want to put in here. Okay. And we want to make sure that we give in our fixed update some value for what horizontal is so that uh, once handle movement is running, we're getting an updated value for horizontal. So in our fixed update, we want to uh, declare that we have this new float called horizontal. And we're going to make that equal to uh, input uh, get axis. And then horizontal in quotation marks, and that's in all caps. And what this uh input get access get access horizontal is accessing here is if i go into uh my unity um interface and i go to project settings input you'll notice over here that i get my input manager and the horizontal with a capital h when I look in there, what's what's being accessed here is the left button and the right button. So the negative button is left, positive button is right. We're talking about keyboard controls here. And so what's a, essentially going to be recorded here by this new float that we've created, um, horizontal, is we're going to get uh, one if we're traveling to the right or pressing the right arrow and we're going to get a negative one if we're traveling to the left or pressing the left arrow and in between that it will be decimals moving from positive one to negative one and of course if we're not moving either it will just record horizontal as zero so this should allow us to um, create that movement now, the thing I'm missing here, I think, is, is to once again call my rigid body. There we go. Oh, that was coming up as red. All right, let's save that. And we've got our horizontal here. We've got our handle movement function created. Uh, and this is going to update continuously what the value of horizontal is. Um, let's just do a debug log. Just so you can see what's happening in the console. Let's feed in horizontal. And this will help us to see what the actual numbers are that uh, horizontal is uh representing as the program is running let's save this and let's go to the console here clear this and let's play it and you'll notice this is continuously recording a zero but when i move the right arrow it records a one when i move the left arrow it's a negative one and you can see it becomes a decimal in between.
So horizontal is recording the correct values uh, so far. Now, we want him to actually move. And you notice that he was just standing there. He wasn't actually moving. So how do we get him to actually move? Well, we've created this function here that's that's creating that movement, right? We're taking whatever that number is. So essentially horizontal times movement speed, right? Well, horizontal is usually either one or negative one. So we need some value to movement speed in order for it to move. So let's go out and give movement speed some value. So I'm going to click on my player and here in the inspector, again, I have this movement speed. Let's just set it to three for now. And we can always change that if we decide that's too much or too little. And I'll go back into um, my script. And of course, I can change this and make this work, but we've got this function, but we're not actually calling this function anywhere. So where are we going to put this function? Where are we going to call this function in order for it to run in our game? So I'm just going to go down here under this debug log. We know this is working, so I'm just going to comment that out. So my console isn't getting bothered anymore. And I'm going to call handle movement. And I'm going to put horizontal as my argument. And since that's running in my fixed update, I should now have my player moving from side to side. Let's save that. Go back into our game. And there he goes to one side and to the other. Okay. So we've got our player moving from side to side. A little slow. Uh, I can come back out here, like I said, and change my movement speed to five and play again. And now I get a little bit faster. And obviously, I can continue to change that uh, to my liking. So there we go, player movement. And the next lesson, we'll have him switch directions.